Welcome to the Cambridge Dads Podcast, brought to you by the Center for Families and the Let's Talk campaign at the Agenda for Children. We'd also like to acknowledge the Cambridge Chronicle for their continued support of the Cambridge Dads Podcast. I'm Luis Vasquez. In this episode, a listener who isn't quite a dad yet was compelled to share his experience of the relationship had or not had with his own father. We'll find out. David Maharas is today's in-studio guest. Welcome to the podcast, and thank you for offering to share your story with us. No, thank you for having me. Um, I've been really inspired by the first one you did, um, and it really uh, inspired me to come on and, and want to share my, my story, basically. I appreciate it. Well, t- tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, and, and how that journey started. Uh, just, just connecting with your own dad. He told me a little bit off the cuff here, off the air, and it's going to be very insightful for our listeners. Yeah, so uh, I was uh, originally born in Mexico. And that's basically where my story kind of ends with my dad because uh, that's where he lives now. That's where he resides. And uh, I, I made that trip over to the United States, you know, following that American dream. Wow. And so he's, he's still back in Mexico. And that's uh, I haven't really spoken to him much. But how old were you? Uh, I was going to say eight. Wow, that's pretty something. young. Yeah, I was yeah. really young. Yeah, and, and was he an everyday presence in your life at that point, up to um, being so eight I, years old? So I had lived with him for a bit. My mother came over to the U.S. first and had left me to live with him. And, yeah, so I spent a lot of time just one-on-one with him. But once I came over, I, I probably spoken to him three times in the past 16 years. Oh man. So, yeah. Yeah. That's that's always tough having someone drop out of your life like that. Mm. But it's it was for the ultimate sacrifice obviously. I want to go back to what you were saying that one-on-one time spent with your father. What was that like when you were with him? Was he your everything? It was it was a little tougher with him. He didn't really have much patience for much. And so it was definitely he was definitely a lot stricter than than my mother is and um not really necessarily missed him much. And it's in the sense that I miss my mother, but it was a lot different. There wasn't much like nurturing and anything mm-hmm. like that. Fatherhood was kind of like a job to him, maybe. It felt more like obligation. Right. So you got to understand that my father and my mother had me when they were really young. So they were still maturing as people. And this was a kid so young in their teens, like late teens. You know, it, it's 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 hard because they're still not fully developed as people. You know, they still haven't done a lot of things so I was necessarily like kind of like a roadblock to that hmm. and so I didn't get a fully matured father to take care of me you know I got yeah. an immature father to say right at the time uh-huh yeah and, and so obviously your your mother was planning for the future yeah. she saw she saw an opening to something better and far being that you're in Cambridge now coming from Mexico as a child do you think you're your father ever looked that much into the future as much as your mom did? Or was he just living in the moment and, and never thought he would lose you? Honestly, I, no, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I sure, I'm, I'm sure he had an idea of what he wanted to do with his future. And seeing as how, like I said, I've only spoke, spoken to him three times in the past 16 years, I, I doubt that it had anything to do with me. Tell me a little bit about that. You've only spoken to him three times in the past 16 years, like you've said. How did that become what it is? How How is that the norm now? I don't know if it was just him not caring or, or having some sort of um, bitterness towards my mother and, and their relationship for not, like, you know, seeking me out. Um, because I know for a fact that my mother never kept me from reaching him. And she would always ask me, and honestly, I I kind of myself didn't want to speak to him as well. Um, but I didn't have a problem if he had reached out to me, you know? Right. But in my, from where I'm coming from is, I'm the son. I shouldn't have to go seek him out. And at what point did you realize that? Um, Probably, like, in my early teens. Um, so pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just, he... He didn't make the effort, so I thought, why should I? Was it like a waiting game to see who would reach out first, do you feel? Or Not necessarily, what do you think? Because I, I just moved on with my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he would reach out, yeah, I got a little bit excited. No no, no matter how like tough I thought I was and all that, I always did 
like longed for that fatherhood, that f- a father figure, basically. But then it just got to a point where I just realized that I wasn't going to get that. And so I had to become my essentially my own father and, and just move on. Those three times that I got to speak to him, it was it was kind of like getting false hope. And, and so I would just kind of, like I said, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Well, I mean, what kind of life have, is he leading today? Being that you guys came over here for the ultimate sacrifice, chasing the American dream, and he's kind of just letting you being you from a distance. I don't know. Like he, he definitely, like I said, probably holds some feelings towards my mother for coming over here. Their plan was that they would both come. And it was essentially like my mother saying, like, yeah, I don't want to be with you anymore. Right. Um, so that, yes, yeah, so that was kind of like their breakup, you know. So um, I, I, I guess he felt uh, some type of way, obviously, about that. And yeah. that's why the relationship and communication diminished. Are you his firstborn? Yeah. You are? Yeah, I'm his firstborn. And does he have a family now? I, yeah, he remarried. And so he has like a stepson and then he has a new a new son. So she actually reached okay. out to me, which is like, yeah. the, wow. what, what baffles me. Exactly. He, it, which is what baffles me is that a lady who knows of me reached out to me, who has no blood relation, no, it's right. just reached out to me. I've spoken more to her in the past two years than I've spoken to him in the past 16. No way. Yeah. And did that open some kind of gateway to connecting with that side of the family again? No, not necessarily because I don't want that. Mm. Um, I never really had a good relationship with my father's side of the family anyways. They like to think that I do. Yeah. They like to think that we're still cool. Right. But I never really had that much of a connection as, as in comparison to like my mother's side of the family. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and how that's connected to your, your experience growing up with and then without a father pretty much. So I work in the nonprofit sector. Um, do a lot of nonprofit work, a lot of youth development. Wow. Um, and so I work with a lot of kids that grew up without a father as well. Um, for whatever reason, their father's not in the picture. I see a lot of me in them, um, behavior wise, the way they act, very loner, very uh, mistrusting. It's, it's really hard to earn their trust. I like being there and, and, and helping them out because I know that they need that structure. Do they have any kind of inclination as to you? Definitely, you know, obviously. Not having a dad. When I get to that point where I feel like it's appropriate um, to share my experiences, and I really, I rarely do it. I, I really only do it when I need to connect with one of them and and really like get through to them, because I feel like that's when they'll see that I'm I'm like them and they have no reason to fear me or not trust me whatsoever um so i you know i share that with them and they're like wow we actually have something in common and and it's that and you know what you're talking about you're not just trying to make me feel better with words you know you're actually yes coming from somewhere Mm -hmm. so you you are at peace right now you're at peace with not having your father in your life at the moment oh definitely i wasn't for a while Mm -hmm. um and it definitely showed in my early teen years, with my behavior, very I was very defiant, just acting out, looking for attention and all that. Yeah. So, so if there's anything positive you've taken from this experience, what would you say that is? I would definitely say that it helped me mature more. It helped me realize that me and the way I am is just I didn't didn't really need a father really. Right. Like, it helped me realize that I am stronger than I think I am. And you're also now, whether you see it or you don't, you're a father figure to a lot of these kids now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I definitely um, give them a lot of the structure that they need. I really thank you for, for feeling compelled to, to share your story, for being an in-studio guest. And I know that alone takes effort. Thank you for working with me to, to get this out. Uh, I do have one last question. If there's someone listening who may have had a similar upbringing to you, what would you want to tell that person to, to help them get over the hump? Seek out more more mentors. Seek out mentors. It's, that's one thing I, I lacked. I didn't have many people guiding me. I had a few people that, you know, gave me advice. But I would, if I were there, I would seek out someone who had shared a similar experience. It was just, just someone who can be there for you. It gets really tough um, trying to fight yourself 
with your own emotions and all that. And it, it can take you to some really dark places, not necessarily, you know, not going to bring any harm to yourself, but, you know, it's, it definitely helps to have people buffer your emotions and all that. Very absolutely. David, thank you again. Oh, that, thank you for having me. Brother, I am moved right now. Thank you for such a moving <laughs> podcast. I appreciate you sharing this. Uh, and, and that concludes. That concludes this episode of the Cambridge Jazz Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, to learn more about the program, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter under Cambridge Dads. There's also a text campaign for dads full of great insight and studies on fatherhood, quotes, and activities happening around you. Just text the word FATHER to 95577. Again, the number is 95577. So shoot the word father over to that number. And thank you again to the Let's Talk campaign at the Agenda for Children, the Center for Families, and the Cambridge Chronicle. David, thank you once again for being an in-studio guest and for sharing such an insightful and moving story. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Luis. Have a wonderful week. Opinions, views, or content expressed by any guest of the Cambridge Dads podcast is solely of their own and not said on behalf of the Center for Families, the Agenda for Children, the Cambridge Chronicle, or the City of Cambridge, and other affiliations.